the last set of trig relationships we want to look at are these products to sums. Here's our first one. So it's when we've got two trig functions, and we're mainly talking about cosine and sine here. So two trig functions multiplied together. So cos cos. So it's cos cos, it must have come from the cos alpha plus beta formula. And if we're just left with two cos cos, that means the sine sines have cancelled. So I must have added the two together because one of the formulas would have gone cos cos plus sine sine, the other one would have gone cos cos minus sine sine. So sine cos then must have come from the sine alpha plus beta formula. And again, I must have added them together because one would go minus cos sine and the other would go plus cos sine. Now you might be wondering why I put the minus first rather than the sum. It doesn't matter because obviously you're adding the two together, but the reason is for the third one, the sine sine option. With the sine sine option, again, it must have come from the cosine one, but now the cos cos is cancelling. So I want to get the difference one and subtract the sum one to get rid of the cosines and come up with two or positive two sine sine. So I just find it easier if I always have the minus ones first. And then all I have to remember is, well, cos cos, then I know it's cos. Sine cos comes from sine, I know that. The sine sine, well, that's now coming from the cos, which is a bit different. So because it's different, I find the difference. Look, it is on the reference sheet, if you do sort of go, hang on, which way around? And I'll admit, I, I tend to forget these ones myself a lot of the time and have to look them up. Well, let's just use them. So if I get cos sine, now I've deliberately written it that way rather than sine cos. So the first thing I do, whether it's in my head or I actually physically write it down, I swap it around. So it's sine cos, not cos sine, because the difference may become important because when I go the sine of the difference x minus 5x which is negative 4x but then I can say well look sine is an odd function so that's the same as minus sine 4x cos cos all right well that one came from the cos I'm going to rewrite it so it's two times because that's how my formula is again whether I do that in my head or physically write it down so I've got a half of two cos cos that must have been the cause of the... <laughs> there you go, I've just contradicted myself, haven't I? I've written the sum first and then the difference second. But it's like, we, because it's adding, it doesn't matter in this case. I get the cos of negative 2 theta, but in this case it doesn't matter because cos is an even function. That's the same as cos 2 theta. If I've got to work out twice the sine of 45, cos 15. Sine cos, okay, sine of the difference, plus sine of the sum, we get nice exact angles we can substitute into, and we, we get our answer. I want to prove this expression here. Sine squared 5 theta minus sine squared 3 theta is sine 8 theta, sine 2 theta. This is a situation where I think I'm going to start with the right-hand side rather than the left-hand side. I'm going to turn that product into a sum. So it would be half of, well, it's sine sine. It came from the cosine function, but sine's different to cosine. So I know I have the difference. Eight theta minus two theta is six theta. Eight theta plus two theta is 10 theta. Now, I'm gonna have to use some double angle results. I wanna end up with sine squared. So I'll rewrite cos six theta as one minus two sine squared three theta and I'll rewrite cos 10 theta as one minus two sine squared five theta, but it's the negative of that. Tidying all that up, we, we get our result that we're looking for. But what about going the other way around? Sums to products. Now, technically, they say, well, this is not on the reference sheet. Well, it is. You just read the products to sums backwards and you've got the formulas. It can be a bit tricky, so I tend to remember it this way to make life a little bit easier for myself. Sine of something plus the sine of something else is this. Two sine half of a plus b cos of half a minus b, or as I remember it, two sine half sum cos half diff. Two sine half sum cos half diff. 
if I want to add the two cosine ones together, then I get two cos half sum cos half diff. If I want to do the difference of the two causes, then it's minus two sine half sum sine half diff. And you notice I haven't bothered with one for sine minus sine, again, because I can use the features of even functions and odd functions to get it out. All right, let me explain my thinking behind these things and have a look at the pattern. Obviously, they all start with two. Well, one of them starts with negative two though, but I'll come to that later, but they're all beginning with two. Notice with the first two, where they're pluses, they both begin with the same ratio. So sine plus sine, I know I'm going to go to sine. Cos plus cos, I know I'm going to go to cos. It's always half sum. And I always finish off with cos half diff. So there's my pattern. Now what happens with this other one? Because it is a difference, this now becomes different. Instead of starting with two, I start with negative two. That's different. Instead of using the cosine ratio, I use the sine ratio. So I don't start with the same ratio. That's different. And instead of finishing with cos half diff, I finish with sine half diff. That's different. So I'm I'm thinking difference. So there are my three sum to product formulas. I have to prove this expression here. Cos of 75 plus cos 15 over sine 75 minus sine of 15. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite the bottom one because I don't have a formula here for sine minus sine. So what I say is minus sine 15 is the same as plus the sine of negative 15. I now have sine plus sine. I can now do it. The top is the sum of two cosines. So it's the sum, so it'll go two cos half sum cos half diff. Well, the sum of 75 and 15 is 90, so I want half of that. And the difference is 60, I want half of that. On the bottom, I'll have two sine half sum cos half diff. Well, that tidies up nicely, because notice I've got cos half 90 in both, with cos 45, so that'll cancel straight away. The twos will cancel straight away. I'm just left with cos 30 on sine 30, which is the cotan of 30, the square root of three. If I want to solve this equation then, I can turn this into a product. Now, because the equation equals zero, a product's nice, because we know when we've got things multiplied together to equal zero, each one of those things are possibly equal to zero. That's how we solve it. So if I turn this sum into a product, it will become two sine half sum. Well, the sum of x and three and x is four x, half of that two x, cos half diff. x minus three x, is minus 2x, half of that minus x. But of course, cosine is an even function, so I'll change that to cos x. It now means either the sine of 2x is equal to zero, or the cosine of x is equal to zero. Well, 2x, I've got to go around twice. I'm talking about boundary values here, because it equals zero. So I get zero, 180, 360, 540, 720, halve each of those, and then cosine equals zero, just two possibilities. And actually, I've already got those in the other one, so I haven't created anything new for this one. Still needed to check though, just in case. So there's my final answer. Okay, 17G. Sums to products, products to sums.